All right, let's look at the solution to practice problem four and practice problem five. I'm going to rewrite this so I have a little more room. So we've got cosecant squared x over cotan x minus cotan x over one. We're going to multiply by the missing factor to get the LCD of cotan. The numerator will be cosecant squared x minus cotan squared x. I'll need to look for a Pythagorean identity that might help me make a substitution here. I know that 1 plus cotan squared x equals cosecant squared x. So this one is just a one step. If I subtract cotan squared x from each side, I'll get 1 equals cosecant squared x minus cotan squared x. So I can replace this numerator with a positive 1. Now I've got 1 in the numerator and cotan x in the denominator. So this is just 1 over the cotan, which is tan x. Let's look at practice problem 5. Same thing, I'm going to rewrite this to give me a little more space. I'm going to multiply both sides by the missing factor to create a common denominator. I want to distribute my numerators and then combine these. So when I distribute the numerators, I'm going to get 1 plus sine x plus 1 minus sine x. This is extremely similar to example 5. The denominator, again, I'm not going to multiply it out until I'm sure that nothing will cancel. And it looks like nothing will cancel because the, si well, the signs will cancel, but I end up with a 2 in the numerator, which will not cancel with either of these. So I will multiply this out, again, using a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared will give me 1 minus sine squared x. This time we use the Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 but we'll subtract sine squared from each side giving us cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared. So we've got 2 over cosine squared x, which is equal to 2 times the secant squared x. All right, so in these last few problems, we tried to take two terms and write them as 1. Sometimes it's actually beneficial to take one term and rewrite it as 2.